Welcome to Target Market Insights, a multifamily and marketing podcast. Each week, John Kasman interviews multifamily and marketing experts to teach you how to find the best places to invest, attract investors, and grow your portfolio. You are listening to Target Market Insights with your host, John Kasman. Welcome to Target Market Insights, the multifamily and marketing show. I'm your host, John Kasman, and I want to thank you for joining us for another great episode. Now, if you're enjoying this show, do me one quick favor and leave us that five-star rating and review. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Now, today we're going to be talking to Lionel Harris. Lionel Harris is the founder and president of Insights for Life Coaching, a high-performance and executive coaching firm. Now, Harris is also a radio host, author, and motivational speaker. Now, he hosts the weekly radio show entitled Inspirational Perspective on WVON 1690 AM, which airs at 7 AM to 9 AM Central Standard Time every Sunday morning. And he is also the author of the book, Slay Your Goals, Five Simple Tips for Achieving Your Life Goals. Let's welcome to the show, Lionel Harris. John, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great, Lionel. I went over your bio at a very high level. Why don't you take a couple of minutes and give us a little bit more background? Yeah, I I think uh, the piece that I would share that most people probably don't know about me is that I spent 16 years in corporate America before becoming an entrepreneur. And in those 16 years, the question I often ask myself was, am I doing work that aligns with my life's purpose? And I kept asking myself that question until uh, that 16th year, where although I was doing work that I felt before had aligned with my life purpose, the the impact I was making wasn't the type of impact that I, I truly wanted to make from a place of purpose. And I decided to finally leave corporate America back in 2015. So that's the piece that, you know, you don't see in people's bios. Typically it's the high points, but I think that's the piece that's really important to me that I, I think your listeners should know about. Me. Yeah. And you talk about, you know, finding life's purpose. I mean, I, I think that's the thing that that internal struggle that people have, you know, that first, that first layer of survival, right? It's just like, hey, I need to make enough money to to survive and pay bills and do that. And then once you're once you meet that, now you're starting to seek things. And I used to run into this all the time in my corporate world, right? Like working for large companies, corporations, working in corporate America. It's like, okay, you're making enough money to to pay bills, but are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you living a life of purpose? Talk right. to me a little bit more about kind of that internal struggle, or I don't want to call it struggle, but that internal dialogue and what, what changed for you in that 16th year where you said, you know what, I'm not, and I should be doing something different. Yeah. You know, I was lucky, man. I I had a mentor very early on that insisted that I know my life's purpose. And so at the age of 22, 23, when I had hit what I felt was rock bottom, the other thing that's not in my bio is that I got kicked out of college, right? Again, we put the highlights, (laughs) But, you know, I got kicked out of college. I'm 22 years old. I'm living in my parents' basement, broke. And my mom uh, comes across this gentleman and and said, hey, I think you need to connect with him. And and long story short, I put it off for a little while, but then I did. And one of the first things he said is, hey, you need to know your life's purpose. You you need to know your life's purpose. And so I, I did the work of distinguishing what I thought was my life's purpose, which was to help myself. I put myself first because like I said, I was broke, but help myself and others live the best life possible. And from that point on, I followed his advice. He was like, look, young man, you don't want to do any work. You don't want to do anything that you can't align with this purpose. And if you trust me, if you, if you believe that, you know, this, you want the kind of success that I have right now, this is how you do it. And, and I believed him because he was incredibly successful. And and so every time I began to encroach on work that didn't align with my purpose, I knew it was time for me to move on and find another role. Man, that's that's incredible. I appreciate you sharing that that story, giving us that that perspective. Yeah. You mentioned, you know, the things that we don't include in our bio, and that's that's yeah. usually where the meat is, right? Where the real lessons are. It's great right. to I mean, listen great to hear you as an author, a radio host, an executive coach. I mean, these are phenomenal things. It's certainly high caliber accomplishments. But to 
do those things, you had to go through the fire. And you said you got kicked out of college, you know, and I, I normally try to keep it on the, the bright and up and up things, but <laughs> you didn't say yeah. you dropped out of college. You said you got, got kicked, kicked out, out of college. Man. So I got, I got to get a little bit of uh, what happened there. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's a classic case. I graduated number one in my class in high school. And it was, it came very, academic work came very, very easy for me. I grew up in a home that was fairly strict. When I say fairly strict, I'm being nice because it was very strict. <laughs> and so when I finally got out on my own, man, I wanted to do my own thing. And school work wasn't it. I mean, I found that I had quite a bit of freedom and I wanted to exercise that freedom. And of course, you know, being, you know, 20 years old or so, you're just not as mature as you should be. And so I wasn't making the right choices. And I remember the day I found out because it was shortly after returning from a uh, Christmas break. I went to my mailbox. There was a little note little on a pink slip that says, you do not qualify to attend our university anymore. It's Northern Illinois University in DeKalb. And I was, I was just kind of like, whoa, you know, just shocked, man. And uh, my heart fell. I realized that my actions had caught up to me and they gave me a couple of weeks to get out of my dorm. And I remember making that, that terrible call to my parents saying, Hey, you got to come get me. And the disappointment they had as they, you know, they packed up all my things in my dorm room and lugged it back to the house here in Chicago. And man, that was, I mean, I'll tell you, that was a tough year. That's how I started my year. And it was a tough year. Um, and I learned a lot though in that year about myself and about who I wanted to be and decisions I would make. And I wouldn't trade that experience for the world now because it's made me the man I am today. No, I think I appreciate you sharing that and being vulnerable yeah. for us on this episode. You know, you talk about uh, how that helped you trans transition and transform yourself into who you are today. You know, for somebody who maybe not getting kicked out of, out of school, but going through other hardships, you know, and, and looking at 2021 as a year to maybe bounce back or recover, you know, what are some things we should be doing to go from maybe where we're at today to, to move forward? Because everyone, you know, people, they like to set New Year's resolutions or set new goals for the new year. Uh, but we know a lot of times those things end up uh, falling by the wayside no more than 30 days in. So help us understand maybe some best practices to actually stick to or devise a plan that can actually help uh, have success going into a new year. Yeah. So real quick, I I'll correct you on this one. It's actually 14 days is the data. I know, man, 14 days before most people drop a, a resolution or a goal. And in my book, one of the things I talk about is the reason that is, is because we just simply forget. So we have all of these, you know, premonitions and ideas about the new year. I mean, of course, you know, we're coming out the holidays. And so the Christmas spirit, and the new year spirit is all on us. And we're excited about the new year 2021. And then real life starts to hit. You show back at work at work on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And that that goal that was so ideal just begins to fade. And so one of the number one ways that most of us drop our goals is we just simply forget. And so I address that in the book in terms of how are you going to take purposeful action towards remembering the goals that you set? And I, and I talk about how to do that in the book as well. And I call it affirming your goals daily. You should be reading that goal every day because if it's one of the most important things that you're up to, you think about it, right? This is your life goal or your life goals, a set of goals, then that should dominate anything you're up to in 2021. And so why not take two minutes and I've timed, like, I've timed clients. They're like, oh, I don't have time to read my goals. I'm like, hey, go grab it right now. Read it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll turn the timer on. They'll read all four of their goals, all five of their goals. And I said, that just took you 120 seconds. What do you mean you don't have time? It's a, it's a, it's a mentality thing. And so if you're willing to affirm your goals daily, you will accomplish those goals. I think it's a great insight, just understanding that you have to write them down, mm -hmm. read them, affirm them, but do it daily. And, and I think people understand, hey, I need to write down my goals. Most, you know, anyone yeah. who's done anything with goal setting has learned, hey, you need to write down your goals. There are other steps, probably make those goals actionable and smart goals or whatever you want to call it. But mm -hmm. let's just assume you wrote down your goals. Most people just throw them somewhere after that. 
You know, they're in a yeah. notebook somewhere or they're sitting on a shelf. And you're making the point to say, hey, it's not enough just to write down your goals. You need to actually look at them daily, read them out loud every single day so you don't forget what you're working towards, what you're trying to accomplish. You have to see it. It has to be present. That, that's a great insight. Can you give us another tip as far as, you know, things that we can do that are actionable to help us achieve our goals for 2021? Absolutely. Chapter five of the book is titled, What Will You Stop? And so often we're like, oh, man, you know, I'm going to create these four or five things. You know, I'm going to lose weight. My marriage is going to be better than it ever was. I'm going to I'm going to make more money this year. You know, in your case, I'm going to I'm going to invest in more real estate or whatever it may be. And. okay, that's cool. Where are you going to create the space to do those things? What are you going to stop? And by the way, most of us have things that we can put a pause to or that we can stop, but because we don't specifically identify them, we kind of continue you know, about our days the way we always have. And what happens is the new stuff gets crowded out. The goals get crowded out. And instead, you know, you're, but you're still watching that series you know, that you watch on Netflix because that's what you're used to doing. You're not realizing, wait a second, I probably should press, press pause on this because my goal matters to me more and the series will be here. And so I, I actually instruct people in the book to identify what you will stop to create the space for your goals. Man, that's another powerful tip. I mean, to your point, um, stopping something to free up time. I mean, I think our perception of time is probably a little warped, right? Because, yeah. you know, for folks who are busy, you know, we got we work with a lot of busy professionals. And if you've got a day job and you're hustling on the side, trying to invest in real estate, building up your real estate portfolio, and you have a family, I mean, there's not a whole lot of free time yet. And still, you probably have downtime. You know, uh, I don't know if you use the screen time app and, or see how much time you actually spend on your phone or like you mentioned, which watching Netflix and videos and things like that. But you have to be very, you have to be very uh, specific about what you're doing with your time. There's a book by a guy named James Clear. It's called Atomic Habits. And uh, I tell everyone it's my, it's my favorite book that I read That's over the last book. couple of years. Yeah. And um, the, the thing that you hit on is we have to almost create these, these triggers, mm-hmm. you know, because we do fall down to our, our habits, you know, and it's hard if you have it, if you haven't already created a habit, you're going to just fall down to what's convenient, what's comfortable, what's familiar. And, you know, getting home from work, plopping down on the, on the couch, turning on the TV before dinner. If that's your routine, you know, that's what you're just naturally going to do unless you force yourself to go to the gym or, or go analyze a deal or do something else. It's really hard to break that unless you set a new habit and new triggers. So I think that's um, really a powerful insight there. Uh, one of the things that I always think about when it comes to coaching and, and trying to set goals mm-hmm. is really trying to understand what people are trying to get accomplished. Because I think that people are always interested in something, uh, yeah. but maybe not committed to it. Can you talk a little bit more about that difference between someone being interested in accomplishing something versus making that commitment to actually seeing that through? I think that's a good insight, John, because as a coach, one of the things that happens is I have a client come to me and I'll give you an example. They'll say, well, I need to lose weight. And I'll ask them why. And that sounds like a a ludicrous question, especially if they're overweight. But it's a great question. And the reason I'm asking why is because typically it's not just to lose weight. There's a deeper root that that we can actually begin to anchor your commitment to that you haven't distinguished yet. And so they'll go down a train of answers that might say, well, you know, I want to, I want to be a size 10 again, right? If we're talking about a woman or if it's a guy, you might, you know, they're not going to talk about their size. Like, well, I just want to be able to play with my kids without getting winded. Right. It's like, well, why, why does playing with your kids without being winded matter? And it's like, well, well, because I want to be around for them. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to have a heart attack and die. Well, why does not having a heart attack and dying matter? Like, why does that, why, do, why don't you want to have a heart attack and die? Everybody dies, right? And it sounds weird and crazy, but what happens is you start to get down to a root where all of a sudden you get to a place where they say, you know what? It's been a long time since I felt vibrant and alive. I just want to feel alive. 
I just want to, I just want to be vibrant. It's like, oh, that's why you're losing 20 pounds. Now, are you committed to being vibrant and energetic in your life from this day forward? Yes. So now when you're looking at the chips, now when you're passing up a burger joint, you, you got a completely different reason. And it's to the core and the anchor of what you can actually be committed to. And I think that's a big mistake a lot of times we make. We, we're, we're creating goals on the surface without actually getting to the root of why we want that thing. And when we get there, that is what we're willing to commit to. Man, that, that, that's huge. And especially for so many folks listening who are entrepreneurs or investors, mm-hmm. you have to understand what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, right. what is another house, another apartment building? What's the real purpose behind that? Right. Because that's going to that's gonna impact the drive. You know, if you just mm-hmm. want it for vanity reasons, that's fine. But that's probably not going to motivate you. But if you want it because you need another source of income because you don't know how long you're going to have that job, that day job, and you need to secure a second stream of income so your kids aren't going to go hungry or you're not going to scramble to figure out what you do in that situation. Now you got something that's motivating you. Now you've got a little bit of a a clear driver. So you have to get that clarity. I I know sometimes talking about goals and uh, mindset it may feel fluffy and frothy and not mm-hmm. the, the brass tacks of things, but these things are important. You know, if you want to understand how to control your mind, how to stay on top of things, how to get up and make those sacrifices, the elite people that I know, those investors who have billions of dollars of real estate in their portfolio, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in their portfolio, they have a clear reason they have clarity on what they're trying to accomplish and that drives them. You may not want to work that hard. I'm not saying you do, you should, but you should at least understand what your goals are and your goals should be your goals, not just chasing the next guy and trying to do what he's doing. Um, But great, great tips there in Insights, Lionel. Uh, I want to talk about just how do we actually start to come out of wherever we're at today Mm. and begin to transition, transform into that person. Most of us have some limiting beliefs. You know, and I'll throw myself in there as well, right? Most people have limiting beliefs um, to some extent. And maybe it's just because of things that have happened, outside noise. If you're starting at zero, you know, you don't have that positive momentum uh, to, to, to build off of. You're starting at zero. How do you start to overcome that noise and those limiting beliefs that may be holding you back from action? Yeah, well, the first thing is you, you have to have a vision for where you want to go. And I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is they obsess with how. And I love a line in Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz, where he, he talks about how how is a distraction. And he even refers to Brian Tracy, who says that when there's lots of effort towards a goal, that that is the thing that can usurp the goal. But instead, what we should do is relax into it. How do you relax into it? You visualize. You actually get present to what it is that you want to create. And then you have to believe that if you're doing everything you know how, you, you, you know how to do, it's going to come to you. It's going to come to you. I'll, I'll give an example real quick to you know, really bring some color to this. So when I left corporate America, I was a C-suite executive. All right. And the reason I say that is because you don't find many C-suite executives leaving corporate America at that point. And part of the reason is the compensation. I mean, between the stock options and stocks and equity and, and the bonus and the salary that you're receiving, it's really hard to match that in the entrepreneurial world, um, especially when you're, you know, you're taking the leap fresh. And for me, one of the things that really got in my way is how am I going to feed my family? How, how am I going to maintain a lifestyle that I've set for my wife by the year? I left, the, I left when my wife and I weren't even married six months, man, right? So I had created this lifestyle since we had met each other through engagement. And now I'm saying, hey, we, you know, I might possibly disrupt that to follow my purpose. And so what I couldn't do is actually create a framework for how I was going to match my income. I, there's no way possible I, I knew how to do that, right? But I did have a vision. I had a vision that I could out-earn myself in corporate America. 
And so that's what I had to focus on, the vision itself. And upon focusing on the vision, the how began to manifest itself. I just took the actions I knew how to take, worked with the clients who had been on my wait list and, and people who had been reaching out that I couldn't support while I was in corporate America. And before you know it, opportunities began to come, you know, from corporate trainings, et cetera, that began to increase my revenue to now I am making well over what I made in corporate America. But it was the vision that got me there. It wasn't some specific set of uh, tangible, you know, goals that I, that added up to revenue that I knew how to make. It was the vision. Man, that, that vision is key then, because, I mean, what you just described, I think, is a, a challenge so many people face. Yeah. You know, yeah. those golden handcuffs where you've got this yeah. phenomenal compensation package, but maybe you don't like the job. The mission, you know, it no longer matches up with who you want to be, the purpose that you have in life. But you're making six figures, you got options, you got your 401k, you might have a pension. And you're like, yeah, I can just walk away from all of this. And besides, who else or how else am I going to make this kind of money that's uh, right. For a period of time. And, and it's tough for a lot of people. And that's one of the reasons most people do standard jobs. And honestly, it's one of the reasons a lot of people do look at things like real estate investing, because it's a way to start building up passive income while you figure out, hey, what that's is right. my vision? What else do I want to do? And if this is going to be kind of our our backbone, can I go lean for a couple of years while, and lean on maybe my real estate portfolio? while I figure out what my real passion is and, and how to monetize that. So, uh, but that that's tough, man. And I, I know a lot of folks really, really struggle with that. I know we're oversimplifying this to an extent, but you mentioned that you were six months into your marriage. A lot of, you know, compensation, stock options, all of that. I get understanding the vision, but how did you practically say, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to take this leap of faith and focus and just do this as opposed to maybe reverting back to, you know what, let me, let me build up something on the side a little bit more and, and then I'll, maybe I'll be ready in another year or two. Yeah. Well, to, to be completely transparent, I mean, real estate was one of the things that I knew I could lean on. I mean, I had been re investing in real estate since my mid twenties. And so that was one thing I knew, oh, at a minimum, I can lean on this, right? I knew that we wouldn't be homeless, right? I mean, a lot of the, the big questions that people ask themselves, like, can I maintain this mortgage? Can It's like, you know what? I, my wife is going to have a place to sleep. She might not be super happy with it, but she's going to have a place to sleep, right? We're going we're gonna to be able to maintain our cars. And the other thing is, um, I prepare for it. I mean, there are tangible ways to set goals for preparation. I mean, I did save money. I mean, so I had a couple of years of my salary put to the side, right? And so there were certain strategies, and this is what I mean by doing what you know how to do. I did those things. You know, I okay, if I want to leave, I have to save money. I didn't make the decision to leave in 2015. I knew back in, you know, 2012, 2013 that that time was coming. And so I was, I was just doing the work. Um, while other people might be trading out like, Hey man, I know my car's two years old. I'm trading mine out. It's like, uh, this is paid for and I'm going to keep it because I'm playing my game. You get where I'm going. I'm playing my game. And I knew that at one point I wanted to be able to leverage my financial stability to a point where I could lean on my purpose. And I'll say this, you know, I, I know that, uh, you know, it's a podcast and people have different beliefs, but I also really firmly believe that God is my source. And if this is work that aligns with what he wants me to do, supporting people, helping people, helping people live the best life possible, that he will source me. And I believe that's in my core. And that also helped me take that leap. Yeah, man, I appreciate you sharing that because it's so it's powerful to understand, too, that you have to I'm going to go back to where you started. What are you willing to, to give up? What are you willing mm -hmm. to stop doing? Yeah, and for you, it was like, hey we're not going to get a brand new car, you know, every year, every year, every other year, you know, this one's paid for, we're going to keep driving this one. And some might call them sacrifices, but you talked about working your plan That's and right. you have to have a vision. You have to work your vision and it has to be yours. You know, if you're just mm -hmm. doing what the folks around you are doing, you're going to be tied. And even though there were golden handcuffs, you were able to break free because you put a plan in place that allowed you to move to to the way you wanted to move as opposed to simply doing what others expected you to do. And I think that's a, a really important thing to take away is 
don't feel like you have to do something just because that's what the expectation is. Yeah. Work your plan, have your vision and execute that plan because, you know, this life, the world we have in front of us, the time we have on this planet, that's all we get. That's right. And if you're going to spend 30 years working, doing something that you don't enjoy and don't love and it's not a part of your purpose, then you're wasting that time. So you've got to mm -hmm. find a way to get into something that you actually enjoy that's fulfilling both, you know, mentally, spiritually uh, for yourself and it fulfills your purpose. So I appreciate you uh, giving us a little bit more context there. I want to talk. Oh, go ahead. I was asking, I was going to share this too. I think this is one of the reasons why personal goals are so important because many of us, we, we know how to fulfill in our professional goals. Like that's, you know, you don't have to write a book to teach people how to fulfill on professional goals. They know how, and if they don't know how, they figure it out because it's, it's, it's an element of their survival, right? But when it comes to personal goals, this is my personal agenda, my health and well-being, how, on, how I want to feel every day, personal agenda, right? My marriage, you know, who I want us to be for one another. That's our personal agenda. Like people might see what's going on on the outside, but they don't know what's going on on the inside. What do I want the inside to feel like and be like, right? Um, same thing with my finances. I mean, there are a lot of rich, broke folk. <laughs> and what I mean by that, like they look rich, but, you know, let that check go missing. I think that's one of the reasons why 2020 was so stressful for so many people. And so that's why I believe personal goals matter so much. Because when I'm clear on the game I'm playing, then I'm not compelled to do what John's doing. Oh, John bought a new car. Hey, look, I can go sit in the car with you, go for a little ride around the block, play with the radio, get out, give you that, and say, man, this looks great, brother. And then go get in my three-year-old car and be satisfied because I'm clear on the game I'm playing. I have my own personal goals. They're crafted. They're ready to go. And I know my car is at the end of 2021, and it's all good. And, but if I'm not playing that game, then guess what? My game, my game changes as soon as John shows me his new whip. And that's the problem for many of us. Yeah, I mean, that, that's it, man. We got to have that clarity and that purpose. And, uh, you know, you hit some great points. And this also goes back to writing down your goals, mm -hmm. having the daily affirmations, because you're going to be tested and you have to be ready to go, you know, and stand up for what you believe in. That's because right. Goals are great. And uh, there's a quote that says, uh, everyone has character until they need to, right? It's like, listen, <laughs> yeah. everybody can be great and make the right decisions and all of those things until you test it. And mm -hmm. having those goals and that clarity, that allows you to persevere through the, the challenges and the tough times and those moments of weakness where maybe you're questioning it or you want to give in. You say, listen, there's a reason I'm doing this. Let me make sure I'm, I, I remember what that reason is. And that ultimately, I'm going to choose the the pleasure of whatever I get from that versus whatever temporary pleasure I may get out of uh, doing something different. You know, I want to talk real quick about, you know, your your voice, man. I mean, listen, I'm a guy who uh, I, I get a lot of compliments on my voice and I'm listening to yours like, man, this dude has a phenomenal voice. Man, you talk about the ideal radio voice. You got a great voice, man. And I, I know you host that, the radio bro. show. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit more about kind of the radio show and kind of how did that come to be? You know, yeah. what do you really cover on that platform? Yeah. So the show is Inspirational Perspective Perspective with Linnell Harris. We we air every Sunday at 7 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. It's available nationwide via iHeart, uh, WBON 1690 a.m. And the show really is about how do we live our best life? I bring on guests who have perspective on on things like that. Lately, we've been talking about the fundamentals of life and fundamentals of success. And so I've had guests on who talk about the fundamentals of work, the fundamentals of money, um, things like that, the fundamentals of relationships and love. But the idea of the show is really to give listeners an opportunity to, one, be introspective and reflective about their own lives and then walk away with tools on how to live a better life as well. No, it's awesome. We'll certainly make sure we drop a link to that. Uh, I know right now the way technology is, you don't have to be local in Chicago to hear it. So That's right. uh, That's you can probably right. listen online through one of the apps. So we'll make sure we drop mm -hmm. that in the show notes. And, uh, you know, I, I think the other piece is uh, ultimately understanding, I, I mentioned your voice, but it's how to use our voices, right? That's and right. you get that perspective and you're able to help so many people from a coaching standpoint for folks who 
you know, or maybe in that place where you were maybe back in 2011, 2012, where they're starting to feel like, hey, you know what, I want to make a transition. Let me mm-hmm. work a game plan. Let me get some thoughts together. Talk to me about kind of the role coaching can play to, to help give people that clarity they're looking for. Yeah. So coaching ultimately does two things. One, it helps you get from point A to point B faster than you normally would, because now you have outside perspective, not consulting, but outside perspective, because coaching is different from consulting in that I don't have the answers. You do. You know your life better than I know your life. You know your wife better than I know your wife. You know your money. You know your work. And so my job is to ask you questions that make you dig into those things and dig into yourself in a way that you normally would not that allows you to create what you want to create faster than you normally would. So that's the first piece. The second piece is that coaching provides awareness. And many of us, we have, I mean, we have blind spots. And so as a coach, my job is to point to those blind spots to help you gain awareness about your own thinking, about whatever mental illusions you may have. Right now, I'm, I'm reading the book by Robert Greene, Human Nature, The Laws of Human Nature. In chapter one, he talks about uh, the irrationality of human beings and how we're so emotionally charged and so emotionally directed. And so that creates blind spots for us. And so it's wonderful to have someone as a coach who can actually point to those things, because when you have awareness, that takes you to step two. Now you have new choices. If you didn't know, you can't choose something different. When you do know, you can choose something different. And you kind of pointed to Atomic Habits. But how do we make that choice the new habit where you can choose powerfully? And so as a coach, we put practices and, 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 and tools in place to help people choose powerfully. And that's where the transformation begins to happen in a client's life that provides the ROI that keeps me in business, that keeps people saying, oh, man, you got to hire this guy. He did so much for my business and so much for my life. I love it. Linnell, for yeah. listeners who want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to reach out? Um, go to my website, um, www.linnellharris.com. It's L-I-N-A-L-H-A-R-R-I-S. And download the book for free, slayyourgoals.com. You can go to slayyourgoals.com and uh, download the book simply by dropping your email. When you drop your email, you will get weekly notes from me uh, just to keep you on top of those goals in the future. I love it. Let's go to our bullseye round. You ready? Yes, sir. Give me a failure or an apparent failure that set you up for later success. Uh, I already talked about it, man, but getting kicked out of getting kicked out of college was that failure. Give me a digital or mobile resource you recommend for your business. Audible. Big time. I'm a big time Audible. When I'm working out, I'm reading. And who can do two things at once? Well, Audible lets that happen. Give me the book you've recommended or gifted the most in the last year. The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Phenomenal book. Talks about hitting your upper limit while we sabotage ourselves. Give me a daily habit that helps you stay focused on your goals. Um, I call it the triple three. And this is something I created as a coach. But what I do is I always write down my top three priorities for the day. The top three actions that align with those priorities or the top priority that I might have. And the top three people I need to reach out to. And so that equates in the business week to 15 actions of 15 people. And that has that has really, really worked well for me in my professional life. I like that, especially the uh, the three people you need to reach out to. I like that a lot. All right. What's one thing you know now that you wish you knew when you were starting out? That it's a process that that it really, truly is a process and that the gold is in the process. I think for me, there was lots of impatience. There was lots of uh, critical judgment of myself, beating myself up. Um, there, are, I can remember times where I was not kind to myself mentally, the mental self-talk that I allowed to happen. And, um, and now that I understand the power of negative self-talk, I think that's the one thing. It's just like, hey, man, your mistakes are there for a reason. You're going to learn from them. Forgive yourself. Give yourself grace. Continue to move forward. You're human. All humans make mistakes. I've actually created a mantra that I share with uh, people who come to my summits and, and virtual conferences. And that is today I choose progress. The commitment is progress. The commitment is progress, not perfection. Today I choose progress because perfection none of us can can reach, man. And if I if I had 
really, really understood that early on, I would have given myself so much more grace in the process. What are you curious about right now? Uh, the sixth planet retrograde that begins on December 21st. <laughs> I'm actually, you know, in my free time, I'm actually looking that up. I'm big into energy. I'm big into spirituality. I do believe these things have an impact. 2020 has been one of those weird years. And with the retrograde happening, you know, so I'm paying attention to what people are saying about that, reading articles from astronomers, really just trying to get behind, hey, what can we expect? Uh, because, you know, we can't necessarily trust the media and others to tell us exactly what's happening when it happens. So I like to be ahead of the, the head of the curve. All right. Well, something a little bit more lighthearted than uh, <laughs> you're, you're a guy in Chicago. All yeah. right. Chicago's known for its food. Give me the yeah. best place to grab a bite in the city. Man, the best place to buy, grab a bite in the city. Mm, there's so many options. I'm going to go with uh, what's the latest in the city where I think there's a great bite. And by the way, I'm a pescatarian, so I got to put that out there. So it's not going to be a steakhouse. I, so I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for fresh fish, great fresh, fresh fish, man. Um, and I'm, the name of the place is actually uh, skipping me right now. But they have phenomenal fish. It's right off, it's right off the river. And it's, it's skipping me right now. I don't, I don't know why it's skipping me, but anyway, Chicago has great spots, man. And here's the other thing. I do eat junk food when I do. It's going to be pizza. And so what I would tell them is hit up Geno's East, grab some good pizza or Illuminati's. All right. Two good ones right there for sure. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Well, listen, uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show, sharing so much insights about goal setting and really, you know, understanding how to, to live our best life, how to get a breakthrough. We've mm -hmm. talked about your book, Slay Your Goals, Five Simple Tips for Achieving Your Life Goals. Uh, again, for, for people who want to learn a little bit more about you, maybe learn a little bit more about your coaching program, what's the best way for them to reach out? Um, again, the website, go to the website or they can hit me up on Instagram. My screen name is my website, you know, linnellharris.com, L-I-N-A-L-H-A-R-R-I-S. Linnell, it's great talking to you today, man. You have a great one and we look forward to talking to you more throughout 2021. All right, man, John, you too.